Hello, today we're looking at chromatography, which is a method for separating out colored chemicals. So chromatography is used to separate mixtures of colored substances. And we can give those colored substances a name. We can call those pigments. So pigments are colored substances or colored chemicals. And they're used in a variety of things. They're used to make, for example, inks for pens and things like that, dyes, and also food coloring as well, or food colors. So pigments are usually mixed together to make colors and we can separate them out. We can use a method called chromatography. And we can do that using chromatography paper or in school, we can just use filter paper, does the same thing. But this helps us to separate out the pigments that might be found in inks, dyes, or food colors. So first thing we could do is just grab some uh, filter paper and make a nice strip of uh, paper that we can use for chromatography. So filter paper is usually circular, so we can just um, cut out a nice rectangular strip. So we can mark it out with a ruler, grab some scissors, cut it out into a nice strip. doesn't have to be that narrow, it can be a bit wider. But there we have our chromatography paper, which is made from filter paper. Now, the first thing we have to do is to put a line on the filter paper or on the chromatography paper near the bottom, about two centimeters up from the bottom. This line must be in pencil. Use a ruler, keep it nice and neat and straight. And we draw it at the bottom of our chromatography paper. Now, it's very important that the line is done in pencil and not in any kind of ink or pigment itself because we want it to not be washed away. And we'll see why that is in a second. So here we have an example of some ink. And as we said, the ink is a mixture of colored chemicals called pigments. So that's a mixture of pigments. And we can put a small drop on the pencil line. We might then just um, give it a moment to dry, let the ink dry for a moment and add another spot on top. So we can add another uh, spot on top just to make that a little bit darker so we get a better separation of colors or we can see the colors better. And we might do that a few times just to get a nice dark um, spot that we can do our chromatography with. Now we don't have to use an ink with a dropper like we just did. We can use a pen or a felt tip pen. And if you've done this at school, I'm sure you did it with a pen. However, it works in just the same way. So we have our paper set up, ready to go with our ink spot on the pencil line at the bottom. We then place the whole thing, uh, support it on some kind of support. And this is usually a pencil or a splint, which is a wooden stick we use to light Bunsen burners, or a glass rod. Once we've done that, we can place that into a beaker or a boiling tube. A boiling tube is a bit like a test tube, but it's just a bit wider and often a bit taller. And in the bottom of our beaker, we have some solvent. So there's the solvent there at the bottom of the beaker. This is often water, but it doesn't have to be water. It could be something else if the ink doesn't dissolve in water. So there's our solvent at the bottom. Remember, the solvent must not go over the pencil line or over the ink because it would wash the ink away and the chromatography would not work. So we have our pencil line with our ink spot just slightly above the solvent, and then we can allow the chromatography to happen. Now, the way this works is that the water will soak up, or in fact, move up the chromatography paper. So the water moves up the paper. And if you look there, we can see the water just slightly starting to move up. It will eventually reach our ink spot and when it reaches our ink spot, it will dissolve the pigments in the ink spot. And once it does that, the pigments will move up with the water. So as the water moves up the chromatography paper, the pigments will move up with it. But what you may have noticed is that they separate out. So the pigments move up with the water and they separate. And they separate because some of the pigments are more soluble than others. Some of them are more soluble than others and also some of them are more attracted to the water than others are. 
Some are more attracted to the water than others, and for that reason, they travel at different speeds, and so they get separated out as they go through the chromatography paper. So that's the method, and that's how it works. What we can do now is take a quick look at another experiment, but this time we've done it on a wider piece. We've got four different uh, samples there. We've got A, B, C, and a question mark one. This is called a chromatogram. So we've got three known colors and one mystery color. Now we can work out various things from this. Firstly, A is a mixture of four pigments because you can see four separate spots there. So that's four pigments that make up A. B has two pigments because of two spots and one is the same as that found in A and that's the bottom one there because it's moved the same distance. So that's found in A as well. In terms of C, we've only got one pigment but that tells us that C is a pure ink. Pure meaning it's made of one substance only. It's something we looked at in a previous video, the meaning of the word pure. But pigment C is pure because it's made of just one substance. And if we look at our mystery one at the end there, the question mark, this is actually the same as A. And we can tell that because the pattern of the spots is the same. There are four spots and they have all moved exactly the same distance to their corresponding spot on pigment A. So mystery one, the mystery one is pigment A. So quite a lot of information you can tell from a chromatogram about the pigments that have been used and that have been separated out. Just to finish off the video for today, here is an example of a chromatogram done for real. So you can see the filter paper, the chromatography paper. We've got the solvent at the bottom of the beaker. We've got the pencil line near the bottom and you can see the colors there that are being separated out. We haven't quite finished this one yet. The solvent has further to go before they're all separated out properly. But this is actually an experiment for A-level biology. So chromatography is quite an important technique that's used throughout uh, secondary school science. So that's it for our video today on chromatography and separating pigments in inks and dyes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.